we're talking about action meet intensity. I'll wait a few seconds for people to join. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, hopefully you are having fun. The first week we talked about the basics in terms of like mindset and also setup that you needed for, you know, to get these started, to take advantage of these and next week, which is when we are learning all the different styles. And it's kind of like at this point, maybe it gets a little bit repetitive, which is like the, you know, um, I start to like, define the style and then I do the sketch and you do the sketch and I orchestrate and then you orchestrate. It's kind of the same thing and that's what we're going to be repeating over these two weeks, this week and next week. But that's the process. Music is practice and this is how we learn. All right, so that was first week, kind of like the basics. Now these two next weeks is like practicing, 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 practicing. And the final last week, that's going to be two weeks from now, it's going to be more like the mixing and mastering, like production side of things. All right? All right. So that's cool. Uh, today, we're going to talk about action made intensity. I'm going to dive right in because I don't want to repeat things that I'm going to be explaining during the class. Uh, but just a quick reminder that um, we are live in the chat as every other class, except for the Friday's Q&A. These classes have been recorded a few weeks ago. So we can, and, and they are edited, so you get the most amount of information with the least amount of time. But we are live in the chat. You can ask any question. We will respond there, or we will point you to the right direction. Maybe some of the questions that you have, you've, you are asking, maybe we've covered those, we've responded those in earlier classes. We'll, paste you the link so you can watch that class or maybe some of the questions that you'll ask will be responding in, in following classes or maybe we'll collect we'll uh we'll uh we'll save that question for this friday's q a all right um so that is one thing also make sure to check out the calendar we have these morning classes and then we've got the master classes with the expert composer, orchestrators, and mixing engineers that are participating in this summit. So also check out the calendar for the exact hours where those live master classes are going to happen. All right. Also, those master classes are live. And one hour before the master class, you're going to receive an email with the Zoom link so you can join. And that is how it works. Everything gets recorded and you can watch the replay later on. Uh, but that is pretty much it. Let's get started. Action with intensity. All right. So action with intensity. I, w I wanted to show you um, four cues today, and then we're going to talk about the style definition, or maybe style definition first, and I'll show you four cues. Um, a couple for um, Jason Bourne, another from Salt. There's uh, there's this one. Uh, it's, it's an action cue that I that I composed. Uh, this is for the mixing course with Dennis. And there's a section that's sort of like action mid intensity. So I, I wanted to show that section as well. So let's get this started. So, uh, very quickly, first, let's describe the, uh, the style. Um, no, you know what? Let's listen real quick the difference between um, action high intensity and action mid intensity. These are just names, right? Some people, um, like the action mid intensity could be like the like the rock percussive type of track or the, um, or the pulsing type of track or the underground sort of like motor or like synth pulsing motor. So they're just, just names. Uh, to me, it's action with intensity, action high intensity. So the action high intensity is the big brass tags, bombastic type of type of music. Something like um, this maybe. Right? And the action mid intensity would be something more like. Ah, uh, one second. Key switches. Uh, let me... All right, just triggering key switches. One second. Right? It's more. Um, so it's like the action type of music that would would go well behind dialogue, right? It's creating that tension, that motor that makes the music move forward and creates the um, creates that tension and action sort of thing. But it's not super super loud, right? Um, in terms of like big like big musical explosions, big hits, big brass tags, big percussions, etc. Right? So that's the difference. Um, so. Um, we're gonna see the style definition, and then we're gonna see three scenes: two from Jason Bourne, one from Salt, 
uh, salt. And then the uh, then I'll show how I build this section. There's a sort of like mid intensity section here, and then uh, we'll move to composing a little bit. Um, but the, the most important thing to mention here is that it's um, it's it's very 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 simple. Um, I was um, looking at this score that we will see in a second from Born's Legacy, fourth movie, I think it was. It is. Um, it's basically percussion, 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 and sort of like an ostinato sort of thing. Um, and then and then basically just um, a few musical motifs or gestures, right? Um, and then we've got some other elements to add like a, like a third layer, or a little bit of like a background, but, but that's about it. Percussion, 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 motifs, background, stuff. If we move down here, same thing, percussion, ostinato, few motifs, um, sort of like a counter melody here. If we go down here, we'll see that, we'll, we'll see this, this uh, in a second. But again, same thing, percussion, percussion, ostinato here, and then a few motifs here and there. Um, they all are connected in a way, all these motifs, um, but um, but it's very, very simple. So don't overcomplicate it. This, uh, what happens usually is that as composers, we start composing and the first layer that we compose, it's not, it's just it's still not there, right? It's not good enough. It's not, doesn't sound like, and then we start adding more stuff and we are adding more stuff and we are adding more layers. We're me doing the music more complex. For some styles, that's gonna help, but not for this one. If we add more things, is to make those layers sound bigger. That would be, but but in terms of musical complexity, this is pretty pretty simple. Okay, something like this. Let's just listen to this track, real quick. Um, so I'll hit play and just follow along. Okay, and then and then we'll um, we'll we'll look at the scene, the video. Okay, um, but let's listen to the music first, and it goes like this. Let's do, that. Let's do this a little bit better. Give me one sec. Um, wow. That on this, this part, I messed up a little bit. Sorry. But it's super, super simple, right? Yes. Um, cool. Uh, cool. All right. So let's let's see the video. Uh, the, the video is gonna be slightly different than the scene. Okay. There you go. I'm gonna get my bag. I gotta go.
All right. So, um, so first thing, so the first thing to pay attention to is how much uh, we lose, right? I, like the music loses because we lower the volume. Uh, we've got dialogue and some sound effects in there. All these inner the inner layers, we start, you know, we the, they just disappear, right? And um, so that happens when you start adding reverb. Like the reverb makes music sound good, right? Uh, in general, um, and then the more reverb you add, usually is the more pleasant. At some point, it's too much reverb. Um, but the enough amount of reverb when you are composing, if you are releasing this music for like you know for an, like an album or something like this for people to just listen to the music, the enough amount, the good amount of reverb, usually when it goes to you know when the same mix goes to this is the mix for the movie soundtrack, I um, sort of thing. Usually it has a little bit less of reverb and it doesn't sound as good as the mix that you would do for the album release, right? Um, it is slightly different mix and they deliver stems and all that. But um, because what's going to happen next is that they are going to mix it, dubbing session, they're going to mix it with the dialogue and sound effects, going to bring it down because music is going to go lower in volume most of the times compared to dialogue because dialogue is king. And then... Um, unless it's just like a big landscape moment with music where music is like almost like the most important element um, with the image itself. But most of the time it's going to be going to go below dialogue and see how much we, we lose so much definition, like musically all the inner lines, we lose them. So it's important to keep things very, very simple. And um, as we've seen here, just percussion and a few motifs here and there. Okay. All right, cool. So let's let's see the style definition real quick, and then we'll see two other uh, examples. So, um, tempo rhythm, rhythmically active, uh, rhythmically active. Um, so we're gonna create a motor. Usually, it's gonna go around from you know, 95 to 160. Um, we're gonna have lots of eighth notes and sixteenth notes, um, and. Um, Repeated chord tones and arpeggios are common, typically 4-4. A meter change is possible, but not frequent. Again, it's going to be more frequent for action high intensity. We're going to have odd meter, um, temp, uh, meter changes, much more both rhythmical and harmonic instability. In, in this one here, usually it's very, very, very simple. Just like a very simple ostinato. And, um, and there you have it. Harmonically, very simple as well. We're going to have like... We can have easily 10 or 20 or 30 seconds with the same chords, or sometimes even one minute or the entire cue, like the entire four minutes cue in D minor, right? Like like the D minor chord. And and it's okay. It's um it's okay if this this is tight. Then but you can you you, you can also have um like maybe 10 seconds of D minor, right? And then something happens, sync point, and then you can move, you can repeat the exact same thing that you did, like texturally the same thing, and then you can move it like a half a step up or like a minor third up or something like this. That's that's very common as well, this sort of modulation. Um but in general, um it's very it's quite static. Now usually uh, this style is like suspense but with a motor, right? We've got Love is major chords, sadness is minor chords or keys, and then we've got suspense, which is like minor with a twist, sort of like some dissonances um, and so forth. This style, action mid intensity, is like suspense, those minor chords with a twist, with adding that motor, right? Adding that rhythmic activity, that rhythmic element. You're gonna have uh, usually minor modes, moves it slowly, treads with added notes that twist are frequent, dissonances and clusters are welcome, frequent use of dissonant chord progressions. But the, those those progressions are going to move very slow if if we have progression at all, all right? If we have changes at all, melody mostly minor modes follow closely the harmonic material. Sometimes we don't even sometimes we don't even have a melody. It's more motivic, and sometimes if we, we don't even have a motive, it's just like we are repeating some of the chord tones, um, more motivic than thematic, and hence a dissonant note in the harmony. All right, that's what's gonna make uh, the DJ style sound like this style. But again, teddy don what, what, what was it? Uh, here. You can hear teddy don don teddy don this part here, right? Um, enhancing those dissonances. And in terms of orchestration, we're going to have ostinatos. Um, so here's the thing. With this style, we can have the 
Like we can, we can, we can. Uh, we we have, well, this is times where this, this the, like the pulsing scenes and um, it can range from like traditional or casual sound to just totally 100% synths, right? The synths are gonna do a good job here because they are very good at creating, um, you know, percussive stuff. Let me see if I've got this loaded here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Right, um, so this kind of thing, it's gonna, um, it's very easy to use and it works really great with this with this type. So, um, uh, electric guitars, power chords, and synths, epic percussion, non-orchestral percussion, um, um, hybrid percussion, synth percussion, all those things, great, right? So, but we can also have ostinatos with like the mid-lower strings or with the lower strings, right? So, when, usually the, the way I, when, uh, when when I have to compose in this style, I usually create the motor first because it's the most important element. And, um, and then depending on what the music needs to do, um, then I'll decide it is going to have a more casual sound, more hybrid sound or completely synths type of sound. Is it gonna be more percussive, entirely percussive? It's gonna have some um, melodic or casual elements, right? So we've got uh, all these range of possibilities Textural, textural possibilities when creating the motor and adding those motivic elements on, on top, okay? Um, usually it's gonna be faster using uh, those type of uh, percussive synth, uh, pulsing synth um, patches. Um, so, so fast of it are primarily performed with staccato strings if, if, if we are going for that orchestral type of sound. Faust continuous patterns are frequently found in woodwinds arpeggios, stuff like this, um, using dovetailing technique. Dovetailing technique, basically, if you've got if you've got the strings doing something like, if you've got the strings doing something like, mm, they can go forever, right? But if we have the woodwinds, they need to breathe. And basically, double tailing means that uh, if you've got the the oboe doing something like this, like tra da da tra da da tra da tra da da tra da da, you can have the first oboe, and at some point, overlap that first oboe with the second oboe, and have the second oboe going for a while, and then the first oboe and, and oboe, and that's the the double tailing. So that's that's that. And then commonly uses sustained brass lines. Gia ba bam. We will see. Um, we will see. Or or like when we've got something like like this right brass right big like long brass sort of line um or this this this, this part here is, is is high intensity but it it has some of the elements of of um of mid intensity this part here coming up but it has big brass um long notes as well This, this, guy, this guy here, low horns, All right? So it's here, and then we move up a um, up, uh, half tone. Uh, no, up a uh, tone, yes. All right, so this, this type of things. Um, this is more a little bit closer to high intensity, but um, but still some of the elements are common. So um, sustained brass lines, sustained chords, trombone sections, and low registers emphasized with uh, dense chords are flavored. All right, cool. So that's it. That's sort of the, the style definition. Step by step, I usually set up the tempo first. And well, first I usually, uh, most of what I do is, um, most of what I do is for, for movies, right? So I, I load the video, or the scene or whatever, and then I I I set the markers. Like I have to hit this point, this point, this point, this point. And then I set the tempo, and I try the tempo to follow those points, right? Those sync points. Sometimes I have to change um, uh, meter, a PC, um, meter, and then once maybe it starts at ninety five, and then at some point I have to change. Like I I'll, I'll hit that point and then to hit the next one, I have to change at 96.2. I'll make the change, right? So um, 
I'll adjust the tempo. Once I've got the, the tempo adjust, then I create the motor, right? And uh, usually I'll start creating the motor and I'll see, okay, I need, I need less intensity here, maybe a little bit more intensity here, and then I have to go super, super low intensity here. I still having a motor. So I'll create the motor first and then I'll sort of like, I'll copy paste, right? Once I've got the motor, I'll copy paste and I'll fill the first section and then I'll copy paste to the next section and then I'll do, do whatever changes I did, I need to do. That's, that's, that allows me to work fast, right? Um, and so sometimes I, I, I may need to completely change the motor, then I won't copy paste. I'll just redo the motor from scratch. But sometimes, you know, to, 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 to create a sense of continuity throughout the scene, the, scene uh, the motor or maybe a part of the motor has to stay consistent, has to stay the same. And so I just copy paste, remove the stuff that I don't need and add more stuff to create, like to add bar, bar, variation to the motor or more intensity to the motor. Uh, maybe I'll move it up a whatever, a tone or half a half, um, semitone or whatever. And then I'll fill the rest of the um, melodic and motivic elements if needed to hit some points. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's that's sort of like the step, step by step. Once you have the motor, it's usually it's easy and it's about having fun. Imagine having this part here where you have this. It's easy to compose music on top of this. Right, like it's it's easy to compose music. You just basically once you have that, it's it's a matter of having fun. Tread it on, tread it on, right? Um, by the way, um, these scores you can find them in the composition for film, a studio of styles course that you have available. These in particular are under the action meet intensity module, and I'm looking at the Waterloo, um, Jason Bourne, and um, Living factory, this one here, and as well as the where is it, the salt salt one that we are gonna see in a sec. All right, cool. So that's the set definition. Let's see a, a couple more scenes. This is from salt, and uh, it goes like this. Clear, move. Go. We may have a visual on a second assailant, Evelyn Saw. Repeat, Evelyn Saw on premises, maybe dressed as a NATO officer. Uh, Let's 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 listen to the music first. Yeah. This is a small sound, it's not a big symphonic sound. All right, so and in context with the scene. Hey, it's me. Yeah, he knows the whole story. Bond's just the tip of the iceberg. Have you heard of uh, Operation Blackbriar? I'm gonna get my head around this and type it up. I'll see you Thursday. Okay. Yes, 
Thank you, one, thank you, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, I have a hit on Echelon, Blackbriar, I repeat, Blackbriar. Looks like it's coming from a European signal. NSA, please confirm your receipt. Sir, what you got? We intercepted a call in London, keyword Blackbriar. Okay, send it to New York right away. Um, um, was saying very, very, very simple. And if you are watching the movie and you don't hear the music or you don't pay attention to the music, that's that means that the music is doing a good job, right? It's like um, it's just working, it's just working perfectly. Um, those chords for dramatic effect and specific moments, and you can see how one of these so right, right here when we introduce this character, right? So, but it's not over the top, right? And um, if it's over top, sometimes they're gonna bring down the music because it's too cheesy, right? And so, anyway, so just just examples. Now inside the sequencer, how would how would this look like? Let's just uh, make this a little smaller, smaller, and let's just go to this section. I think it is this one here. Yes, let's let's see. Well, give me one second. And we're just going to see. So I, I, I built the motor just with the, with the, so like high strings, just a C minor chord, right? Very simple C minor chord and just moving the third up and down. So this guy here and just bring, and, and just, just listen how dry this sound. This is, um, LAS current, no, uh, this is, um, scene strings, closed mics. Where's my mixer here to go let me just make that louder oh it's super dry right now this actually yeah this is um what we have here is a little bit of um cine strings closed mic let me see if i can bring this here this is vienna and it's um this guy here let's just solo this guy And then we're gonna go here. Mm -hmm. It's gonna go here. All right, so you can see here, um, we're using, I know it's super, super small, we're here. It's the close mics, see, close mics, with a little bit of room mics as well. Um, so just close, a little bit of room. Super close. Let me just bring up. All right. And so now if we mix this one and this one, we have the close and even closer sound. Let me just go here one sec. This is the. Um, Adding a little bit of variation here, uh, but it's the same thing. This is the E note, F, right? Uh, sorry, E, D, F, E. When you put them all, to, uh, the two of them together. Right? And then. Then we have the violas. It's just, it's just adding variation violas and cellos. Um, doing a little bit of. Let's open the third of them. This is the motif that we are repeating throughout the entire piece. which starts here. Here with the. It's again here. 
um, with uh, with uh, uh, cellos and then repeat it with uh, with the horns. Sadata is here and then here. So it's the motive that we have throughout the entire piece. Again. Now at the beginning, I also so we've got the closed strings uh, to add that that. Um, detail and definition, we also have a little bit of uh, Speedfire Symphonic Strings that adds that room, right? So with, without, so this is with, without. We lose the size. Now I mixed it very carefully and I, you know, I, I purposely add the exact amount that I want. You see how it, this is the expression, how it um, goes up and down. It's like I want more room in specific moments. It just adds up a little bit of variation. And then it goes away. So the first time is a little bit more symphonic, a little bit bigger. And then the second time that I repeat this, it gets a little bit closer. It's subtle, but, it's, um, but you can hear the difference. So I want the motor closer because I've got some other elements that I want to stand out. Okay, and it's like the uh, the big horns and also the low, the low, the, the low staccato strings motifs that we've got here, here, right with the with the double bass. It's it's basically um, double bass pizzicatos and uh, double bass um, arco staccato and electric bass. So it comes here. All right, so I built, I created that motor with staccato strings. Um, there is another part where I created a motor with um, with uh, with sort of like a synth type of thing. This part here, it's uh, it's a little bit more high intensity. It's this part here. So it's basically this and the where is it and the um, hi hat where is it? Oh, I don't see it because okay. This guy here. So that's it, and the rest of elements, um, just adding motifs and things here and there. Um, so basically what we've got here um, for the motor is, yeah, is this the drums, a little bit of staccato strings here. Then we've got the, the high strings doing this. Uh, sorry, where is it here? Hmm. And then at some point these these para para bam strings go away, and so I replace it with with arp glissandos. Let me just show it to you one sec, and then we're gonna move to composing. Um, but uh, yes, I'm talking about these guys here. So when they go away, like we lose intensity, right? So what I did is I added this um, guitar. Um, hit here, right here, and then um, I added the the arp um, glissando going down. I think it is. Now it sounds a little bit artificial because um, on purpose I'm bringing down expression because I want to clean the like DK. I don't want like the. Right, I don't, I don't want the the rest of the tail. And that's it. 
right? So the, in this style of music, sometimes when connecting for co connecting an action meet intensity, um, when connecting one section to the other, what it is very effective is having like a motive or something because that connects the that connects the two sections. And we've seen that, you know, we can go with the same thing for forever. How long is this scene? Like a minute and a half? Like a, like, like a minute 10. It's the same stuff over and over and over and over again. So when we change it, sometimes it's not, not noticeable. And um, what I like doing is either sort of like creating a motive that resolves on top of the next section, like the and the downbeat of the next section, like this guy here. This guy here. Right? Which is the motive inverted sort of thing. And this goes with... Uh, with what else? With the staccato, with these guys here. With the strings runs that go like this. And all together it goes sort of like... Right, and then um, now this section and the next one is super, super different. Next section goes like this. So, so we are changing meter, we are changing tempo, we are changing key, we are changing everything, right? And so, um, an easy, uh, an elegant way to connect these two very different um, sections is to, is to sort of like create a melody that sort of like that, that goes from the first section to the third section again, same thing. So in this case, I had the horns coming in here. Right, so um, so this helps. If without this, it's a little bit more sudden. So without it, no horns. So it still works. It's sudden though. So this is sort of like easiest. All right. So that's sort of. Sort of it. All right, cool. Um, all right, so let's um, so setting the tempo. Let's say that we're gonna ba, 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 signature. Let's go four four, and then tempo. Where is it? So I'm gonna create two motors. One with with the strings, sort of thing, and then another one with um, with synths and percussion and stuff like stuff like this. So right, let's do this. <laughs> Sort of like lower strings, and then we're gonna have. Really? 
Now you're talking. Let me just go here once. Ah, right, cool. Then it done, and then we're gonna hand these. So it's strings, yeah. Got one guy messing around here. One sec. Alright, so that's great. The motor adding a little bit of um, background with one of these things. By the way, uh, suggestions, stuff that we can add, like um, uh, on top of the motor, brass sweats, low brass long notes, high strings fragmented short melodies or motifs, short brass melodies, string swells or long notes, um, column response type of elements, random percussive or casual uh, accents, electric guitar, stuff like this, right? So, like, long string, something like... Piano. Um... Right, top of this, we can add some percussion. Uh, epic, no, let me see these guys. Where are you? No.
tu 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 bom Yeah, so a little bit more of motor, and then maybe we can add uh, like a motif here. Cello, maybe. Mm. Exactly. Tira den don pam. With the double basses. Ah. Come on. Oh fuck. This reads. I save. I save this. There you go. Don't like this one. one. Yeah. No, I don't like this one. This one in particular is uh, Sin Strings. Don't like it. The Speedfire. Tira den don, tira den don, din, tira don. Tira don, tira den don, di. Tira den don, di. Ta -da. Then don't save, save, save. Super low, too low, um, too loud. This just ring down. Tiradum, just for a subtle trombones, trombones, um, trombone symbol articulation. This guy right here, no, 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 with mutes. Where's my trombones, 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 trombones? There you go. I 
got him. And then... It's okay. I will work on this a little bit more, and uh, that sort of that sort of it. Okay, so that's option number one, and then option number two would do, uh, would be using like pulsing synths, pulsing synths, and, and for these I am using. Too fast, isn't it? I usually split this into classes, but I'm just gonna do it in one so you get. One. So this is open. This type of synth, right? So this is uh, Audio Imperia. All right, cool. So this is the first one that we recorded. Quantize it. So what I, with these libraries, I like to have control over volume, obviously. Then filter. So it is a high pass. Um, sorry, a low pass. All right, and then distortion. And then I like having uh, like a replicate of the th uh, is this the same patch three times, and I usually use one more for left, another one more for center, another one more for so center left right sort of thing.
Ah, cool. Some, not a very long texture. But... So Mark, one question. Yep. When you are like writing the the motor on the synths, like strings don't have to be playing the motor anymore, or you can combine them. You can combine them. In this case, I'm gonna rely on the motors and per, uh, on the synths and percussion to create the motor, and then I'm gonna use the strings for motifs. So this could do for the motor. Maybe I can. Maybe. I don't like this one. Right, instead instead of low horns long type type of notes, they're gonna use Brahms type of effect. Too loud. Maybe later. Come on. I don't have control. Oh, why is this? Sorry, I lost my camera. So I think we're gonna go with this one. And hang. I like the first beat, which did get recorded? Yes. Maybe I'll use another Brahms here. Brahms too. Yeah, 
sort of thing. Careful with the low heat and all this. Um, you may go too loud sometimes. This out. I don't mind. Sure. Ah, so this 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 could create the motor. I would like to have something sort of like. Uh, more high end sort of thing. So I don't like any of them except for the last one and the first one. All right, cool. And then maybe a little bit of small bit percussion. So with this with this one, I can control close mics, far mics. I'm gonna go close. I think I'm gonna go left. Oh, this starts here. Right. Yes. Wow, so. Recorded, then I'll do the automation. Go oh, here, one seventy. Okay, this is the first pass. Let me just fix this. Um, oops, sixteenth. Working, yes. Um, yeah, and now we're just having fun. We're gonna add just some strings motifs here and there. So this is gonna be one, two. One, two. One, two. Yes. Tin 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 tin. Tin tin dating.
time. It works. Losing um, to the motor is not gonna add, I'm gonna add, gonna add, what I'm gonna add. Uh, yes. Much reverb. Oh, or maybe, maybe. Yep. A lot of reverb, just just one hit. All right. Um, we're gonna need some support down here. I need a little bit of a solid low end sort of thing. Where do I have my... Um. Why does this have so much reverb? Why do you have so much reverb?
Done. Why do you have so much weaver? Oh! Give me one sec. Oh, one sec. Okay, got the point. Yes, but not that much reverb. I let one. Oh, there you go. Now it's working. That's exactly what I wanted. Very powerful sounding cellos. This guy's here. A lot of reverb. So. Yeah, something like this. supposed to do um just these guys this is loud this is loud um but my ring is on tiny it's too loud um Maybe I'll bring it down here. Or my cello, 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 
green. Change also green. Here. This guy. Bring it down. 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 Dip. It's not perfect, but that's starting a start, starting point. A starting point. There you go. You were supposed to stop. Yes. Now, there you go. That's it. 